Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Well, welcome, and particularly welcome to those who have gathered online. And we want to say Happy Easter to all of you here and elsewhere, particularly across our ministry area, to all the nine churches and to former parishes who I know are joining us this morning. So Happy Easter to all of you. We begin our service in our order of service booklets. From God our Father, who in his great mercy has given us a new birth into a living hope for the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, grace and peace be with you. And also with you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We pray together. Heaven and Father, all hearts are open to you. No secrets are hidden from you. Purify us with the fire of your Holy Spirit, that we may love and worship you faithfully. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Well, at this time, usually after a long Lent, it's wonderful to come to church and to see flowers once again. And it seems even more wonderful this year after the difficulties we've had to see the wonderful display of flowers we have here in Clantricent. Um, one of the other things we always have on Easter Sunday, of course, is our new Paschal candle. Throughout the year, we use the candle and gradually it burns down as we use it at various services to indicate that we're moving through another church year and then on Easter Sunday as we celebrate new life we have a new candle so I'm going to light it now. This is where the matches are damp from being in church. <laughs> Remember Cracker Jack? <laughs> it's a bit like that. <laughs> and so as we gaze on a Paschal candle, there we go, a symbol of light to the world, a reminder of what happened 2,000 years ago, that wonderful event of Christ rising from the dead and bringing us a message which resonates these 2,000 years later to us here gathered in this place and across our ministry area. But first, we're going to prepare ourselves to meet him in the heart of our Eucharist. So let us pray. We reflect on our lives on the many months which have passed since we've met together, for all that has happened to us. We ask God for forgiveness for the various things in our lives which we need his forgiveness by praying together. Heavenly Father, we, we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and have failed to do what we ought to have done. We are sorry and truly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, to die for us, to forgive us all that is past, and lead us in his way, to walk as children of light. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you, set you free from sin, strengthen you in goodness, and keep you in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. So we now stand as we say the Gloria together. <coughs> Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receiving our prayer. For you 
respect for Easter Sunday. Lord of life and power, who through the mighty resurrection of your Son, overcame the older order of sin and death, to make all things new in him, grant that we, being dead to sin and alive to you in Jesus Christ, may reign with him in glory, to whom of you and the Holy Spirit be praise and honour and glory and might, now and in all eternity. Amen. Amen. Please be seated as Barbara comes to read our first reading. The first reading is Psalm 118, verses 14 to 24. The Lord is my refuge and defence, and he has become my deliverer. Listen, shouts of triumph in the camp of the victors. With his right hand the Lord does mighty deeds. The right hand of the Lord raises up. With his right hand the Lord does mighty deeds. I shall not die. I shall live to proclaim what the Lord has done. The Lord did indeed chasten me, but he did not surrender me to death. Open to me the gates of victory. I shall go in by them and praise the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The victors will enter through it. I shall praise you, for you have answered me, and have become my deliverer. The stone which the builders rejected has become the main cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is wonderful in our eyes. This is the day in which the Lord has acted, a day for us to exalt and rejoice. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So now we have our New Testament reading by Angela. The New Testament reading is taken from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 10, verses 34 to 43. Then Peter began to speak to them. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us, who were chosen by God as witnesses, and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. Listen to the Gospel of Christ according to St. John. Glory, Glory to you, Lord. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary of Magdala came to the tomb. She saw that the stone had been moved away from the entrance and ran to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved. They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, she said, <clears throat> and we do not know where they have laid him. So Peter and the other disciples set out and made their way to the tomb. They ran together. But the other disciple ran faster than Peter and reached the tomb first. He peered in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not enter. Then Simon Peter caught up with him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the napkin which had been round Jesus' head, not with the wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the disciple who had reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed. Until then they had not understood the scriptures which showed that he must rise from the dead. 
So the disciples went home again, but Mary stood outside the tomb weeping. And as she wept, she peered into the tomb and saw two angels in white sitting there, one at the head and one at the feet where the body of Jesus had lain. They asked her, Why are you weeping? Jesus answered, They have taken my Lord away, and I do not know where they have laid him. With these words she turned round and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not recognise him. Jesus asked her, Why are you weeping? Who are you looking for? Thinking it was the gardener, she said, If it is you, sir, who removed him, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to Mary, Jesus said, Mary, she turned and said to him, Rabboni, do not cling to me, said Jesus, for I have not yet ascended to the Father, but go to my brothers and tell them, I am as ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary of Magdala went to tell the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she gave them Jesus' message. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Well, it's good to be back, of course. Um, but I want to start the sermon by thinking about all the people who it's still unsafe to go out and about at the moment and who are part of our church community, would love to be here, but are unable to be. So we want to wish them also a happy Easter. The title of the sermon is I Saw the Lord. I saw the Lord. Can you imagine that first Easter morning, after the 48 hours they'd had, that Mary suddenly realises that the events of the past two, two days have culminated in Christ, her teacher, coming back from the dead. That, can you imagine when she said, I saw the Master, I saw the Lord, how breathless she would have been. How excited? Would she have been excited or nervous or overwhelmed? Trying to explain to the disciples what had happened. And I'm sure as we move on, it'll be later generations. How on earth do we explain the last 12 months that we've experienced? I don't know about you, but at the beginning of this period of the pandemic, what I was trying to explain to church congregations and family, we just have to be patient and think of something to do. And I know a lot of friends, maybe some of you at the beginning, you thought, well, this will pass quite quickly, but I can use the time. I can use the time to do those DIY projects. I can take up a hobby. I can bake a bit more. Um, maybe you can learn a language, as I've said I've tried to do. And Maybe read the Bible all the way through. I've never done that, so I might try and do that. Um, I confess one of my ambitions was to read, read the complete works of Charles Dickens. It was one of those foolish moments many years ago when I saw it advertised on television where you buy the magazine each week and it comes with a novel. And I've got 32 of these novels. <laughs> and I've never read them all the way through. They look lovely in the hallway in the bookcase. Um, and I got through Oliver Twist and Halfway Through Hard Times. Um, good title, I suppose. <laughs> and that was me done for the year. And I think many of us, we started being patient. We took up things to occupy ourselves. But when we went into that second lockdown in the autumn, it's been a drag. It's been hard. We've all, I think, been under a cloud of depression. I've not been able to see friends, loved ones, family, church, members, not been able to do the things that are so much part of our life. We've had to learn patience, but it's been so difficult, so difficult to cope with not being able to move and act in the way that we want. And it compares probably to insignificance 
what the disciples, Mary and other followers of Jesus went through in that 48 hours from Friday to Easter morning. Many, of course, didn't believe on Easter Sunday. It took them a while to accept what had happened. But if you look at the passage, the passage which was just read, the long passage from John's Gospel, it's full of active words. They ran, they went, they saw. It's full of action, full of decisive action. And my message to you this morning is a simple one to all the churches across the ministry area, all nine. I understand your frustration. I understand the frustration of Van Haren and Bruno of being without a vicar to look after them during this time. I understand that also the similar frustration at Lampwick Vardra and all our churches who haven't been able to open regularly and not as we would like. But the good news, the hope is that yes, we have some clergy will be joining us to help lead those churches, but also we have the promise that restrictions will lessen and we will be able to open our churches again. And it's then that I'll be calling on all of you from across the nine churches to action, to do many things, to spring to life. And I'll come to some of the activities in a minute. But it seems this is an appropriate message for Easter Sunday because the whole message of Easter, the symbols, are all about springing into life. Chicks. You've all seen the chicks on our YouTube videos. Well, you'll be seeing some other animals later on um, in the next couple of videos because we now have rabbits. <laughs> also a symbol of Easter, I know. And so, but they, they're pretty good escape artists, so when we get back, it might not be an Easter egg hunt as much as a bunny hunt, but we'll see what happens. All these symbols of things bursting into life, and that is what we are going to be called to do in the next couple of months and the rest of this year, is to work together. Yes, to rebuild the life of the church, but also to rebuild our communities, to support our schools, to support our shops, to support our pubs, to support every aspect of community life. And it will take a lot of our energy, and we'll have to commit to it. But that's what we are called to do as a church, is to support in action through love. Um, I don't know if you've heard about, I if I, Amy told me this joke, so it's her fault. <laughs> um, a vicar, priest, and a rabbit <laughs> attend a blood centre. Probably going to get their vaccine, I suppose. And they, they dealt with the vicar and the priest really quickly, and they walked away, and then they looked at the rabbit. And they said, what blood type are you? And he said, well, I think I'm a typo. It takes a while to get that one, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Type not? Never mind. Should be a rabbi, that's the point. <laughs> the, the good thing um, about the way we're doing services at the moment, um, for those who are watching online, it is being um, screened online live at the moment, but the sound is always terrible. Um, so you can watch it online at the moment, but we will put another version edited later on today, like our usual films, where the sound will be wonderful. And at that point, um, Amy's able to edit out the gap between the joke and your laughter. <laughs> <laughs> so, what sort of things are we going to be committed to? Well, there's simple things, like the piece of land at the back of this church here and some of our other churches. We need to clear it. We need to provide a space. People are going to long for outdoor spaces where they can sit and just reflect on what has happened over the past year, maybe to remember lost loved ones, and to be able to build um, a small garden with some benches where they can look across the valley next to the church, maybe just the thing that they need to meditate, to pray, and to take a quiet moment. So that's one project. Of course, we have to return to many of the midweek things that we do, like the Dementia Cafe in time. And so we'll need commitment for many of you to be involved in hospitality, to welcome people to Sunday church and also these other events. 
There will be so many things that I'll be calling commitment from all of you to get involved in. And so we're going to move from a year where we've been frustrated and impatient to suddenly, like Mary and the disciples, being called to swift action. It was within 40 days of Easter Sunday that Jesus ascended and suddenly everything was their responsibility. To build the church was in their hands. One of the other projects which started on Friday, as well as teaching in church, we believe that there should also be for those who want to engage subjects at a deeper level, we as a ministry area should provide teaching which engages with education, with the law, with the university. And we have an, had an event on Friday where we looked at Lamentations. We had a professor from the University of Ancient History who talked about that subject. And near Ascension, we'll have our second in that series where we're going to look at the subject of Ascension and all that that means. And we're going to involve a couple of people in that discussion. And this is going to go towards creating a new institute within the ministry area, an institute of Christianity, which will help those who need to study and train. And so many of these projects will need your help and support. And so finally, this reminds me when I was put in a position of being called upon to do something which I didn't know I was gifted for or prepared to do. It's about 15 years ago now, it's a couple of years before I was ordained, and I found myself in Brooklyn in New York. And I was taken around the first night, late at night, to explore this area, it's mainly a Puerto Rican area. There was a lot of poverty, a lot of unemployment. Um, I worked with the Franciscans there who Many young people lived in the church and slept on the pews because they'd been devastated by the effects of crack cocaine which for the 15 years before had swept through the community. But on my tour of the community, we came, because you can imagine, some of us probably are old enough to remember Starsky and Hutch, and you can imagine those New York streets with those brownstone tenement buildings with the stoop, the steps up to the front door and the basement down below. And we walked past house after house, girls skipping, men drinking out of bottles covered in brown paper. That was the scene. And then we came to a gap between some houses, a plot of land. The Franciscan brother John picked up the chain link fence and took me into an oasis. There was vegetables, there was vines, there was all sorts of things growing there. I was later to meet someone from the community, Mama George. She looked after many of the young people, the teenagers. She was in her late 60s and she looked after these young people who had lost, lost loved ones, lost, lost parents. She cared for them. She used her home, her money, the little she had to give away. And she wanted to do something one day about all this crack cocaine in the area, which was killing their young people and their young adults and devastating families. The men who were unemployed in the community felt helpless, powerless to go up against a gang which intimidated them. And so they got more and more depressed. Their masculinity, they felt, compromised because they couldn't look after their families and stand up to these bullies. One night, Mama George organized a young group of women. They walked down the street and they set fire to the house which was selling the crack cocaine. They called the fire brigade and they waited for the police and the fire brigade to arrive. She was arrested and I met her the first time in prison. On her release she was part of the community once again. The next step was to get the men who had lost all their enthusiasm for life, their direction, 
she organised them into clearing the rubble from that burnt out house which had been knocked down, clearing the rubble to the sides of the plot. They scratched away for a year at the dust and the cement and they began to plant. She organised the women into planting and growing seeds in their kitchens. Within two years, they had an allotment of vegetables. There was another character who made homemade Caribbean rum out of the mallows. <laughs> and they sold all the, they had a stall eventually at Brooklyn Farmer's Market. There's two aspects illustrated there in the life of Mama George. Patience, to nurture and to watch things grow. But when called upon to act, she acted. She showed courage, courage I'm sure I couldn't have shown in such a circumstance, but that community was changed. For the years that followed, drugs did not dominate that community. Their young people didn't die at the rate they were dying. And she was able to just demonstrate that love can be practical, can be physical, can change the way we live. Now, of course, in our nine churches, I'm sure we don't have some of the extreme circumstances I've just described. But we will be called upon to act in the same powerful way, to support our communities, get over one of the worst things which has happened in all our memories. And with that, we will find Christ in the relationship, in the act, in the activity we share with each other. And we will find new friends, new friends, who too can find the love of Christ in that act. So, I do wish you a happy Easter. Amy and I and the family wish you all a happy Easter. And I do wish us a new year where we're able to share much more than we have in the past year. But I do call on myself and all of us to work together in a task which, at the moment, might seem beyond us, but I'm sure we're all capable of. And that's to demonstrate to this community that we're at the heart of this community, all our nine churches are, and we have a message and an action to bring. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for calling us here today. We give thanks that we can once more enter our church, especially on Easter Sunday, and worship together. Heavenly Father, give grace to us, to our families, our friends, and our neighbours. May we serve Christ in one another, and love as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, teach us what we should care about in our community and the wider world. Inspire us with new ideas. Help us to turn them into decisions, and those decisions into actions. Lord, in your mercy. Teach us to learn from others and to work with others. Inspire us with openness and humility. Lord, in your mercy. Teach us what really matters. Inspire us to think more of others than ourselves and turn selfishness into compassion and care. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, strengthen the work of John, our Archbishop, June, our Bishop, and all Christian ministers. We pray for Vincent, Rosemary, Philip, and their families as they work together in bringing change to our benefice. We also pray for David Jones and his family as they prepare for their move to our benefice in his role as curate. And Rick Bratton and his family, who will join us as curate later in the year. Make us a welcoming body of Christ here at Lancaster Church and all our churches throughout our benefice. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. 
Let us pray for all people affected by the pandemic. It has impacted our lives during this last year. Pray for the NHS, for carers, police, teachers, council workers, and so many others that are not named, but that are frontline workers. Pray for families that have not been able to be with their loved ones, and for families that have lost loved ones during this pandemic. Pray for the lonely and the isolated. Also we pray for all those who are ill at this time, and for their family and friends who support them. Especially remembering Anne and Jeff Howells, and how Bosley. And for anyone who hasn't been named here today, but is known to us and is in our thoughts. Lord, in your mercy. Your we remember in our prayers this morning those who have died recently and their families who grieve, especially remembering the family of Yvonne Miles. And also the people who are remembering the anniversary of the death of a loved one. Lord, in your mercy, hear your prayer. We pray for the United Kingdom, for Scotland, England, Ireland and Wales, and our Sovereign Elizabeth, our Queen. We give thanks for the work of the government, here at the Senate and at Westminster. Inspire, Lord, the work of all ministers, civil servants, local councillors and community leaders, so they will be strong in leadership, just, honest and consistent in all they do to serve their communities. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of peace, we thank you for all your creation and for all your people throughout the world, in all their differing cultures and environments. We pray for all humankind, and especially for those suffering poverty, persecution, slavery, oppression, injustice, and the effects of conflict. May they receive the love and nourishment they deserve. We pray for the Middle East, for Africa, Asia, and all parts of the world that are in turmoil at this time and need our prayers. Lord, give wisdom and a desire for peace to all our world leaders. Encourage and support all who work for peace and reconciliation. Give them understanding and resolve not to give up. May they know the love of Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And finally, in the silence here, Lord, we bring before you our own thoughts, concerns, and prayers. <coughs> Lord, in your mercy. Dear Lord, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us stand. The peace of Lord be always with you. From where we are, we give a socially distanced peace of Lord.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, it is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise, Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty God, through Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord. Because in these days of Easter we praise you with joyful hearts in thanksgiving for your saving works, since in the paschal mystery of your Son you have brought light to your children for the hope of eternal life. For one perfect sacrifice offered on the cross, he has restored us men and women to his own image, open the gates of heaven and regain for us the hope of glory. Therefore with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power. Hear us, Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Through him accept our sacrifice of praise, and grant that by the power of your Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be for us his body and his blood. Who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink from this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ is God. Christ, 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 Christ is risen. Therefore, Father, remembering the saving death and resurrection of your Son, we offer to you in thanksgiving this bread and this cup, your gifts to us, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send your Holy Spirit upon all of us who share this bread and this cup, strengthen our faith, make us one, and welcome us into your kingdom. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. And so let us sit or kneel to pray. As we greet our risen Lord, let us pray as he taught us. Our Father, our Father who art in heaven. heaven. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Alleluia, the bread which we break is it the communion of the body of Christ. The disciples knew the Lord Jesus in the breaking of the bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bear of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, give us your peace.
Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. And so we stand and remain in our place to receive communion. If you would like to just receive a blessing, um, if you put your hands uh, across the front and you receive a blessing, let us stand. And so we pray, give in thanks. We thank you, Father, for feeding us through the body and blood of your Son, Jesus, who is your Before we close um, our service for Easter Sunday, um, I just want to draw your attention to the new newsletter. There's a couple of things. Um, first of all, at this time, we're aware that so many people have so many concerns. If there's something you would like to be remembered in our daily prayers or in our Sunday prayers, um, please contact myself or Shirley and we'll be able to include it in our prayers. Um, secondly, I'm sure you're always excited about vestry meetings and looking at financial plans, etc. Um, this is going to be a little bit different because we will be joining online with the other eight churches and we'll be looking back a little bit at what has happened to the eight churches over the past year and celebrating some things and sharing with each other, but also looking forward to the coming year and any plans that we might have. That's the annual vestry meeting, the annual church meeting, which is going to be held on Monday, April the 26th at 7 o'clock. The final thing on the newsletter I want to draw your attention to on the front cover, there's our Facebook page, of course, and other social media, but there's a new site. It's for the ministry area. It covers our nine churches, and you'll see there in blue, um, the title of the new ministry area web page which has been launched this weekend there will be a more catchy title soon when we've established it but for now if you want to have a look at the ministry area web page you'll be able to look at it on those details and we will be posting news when we have it of our new arrivals the various curates etc and all the new projects which we hope to start and how we want to go about opening our churches so please keep an eye on that web page. And for those of you who have been watching live, um, later on today there will be an edited version of this service with better sound and you'll be able to catch the service there. But now let us stand. The Lord be with you. And also with you. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you this Easter tide and with all whom you love, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the name of Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.